In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. I was like a child who had just lost all of his Easter candy. The year was 1967. I was four years old, and my parents were going out to dinner that night, which meant that they were leaving me at home with a babysitter for the first time. When this stranger showed up at our house, I began to cry. My parents gently explained that they were in fact coming back, but all I knew was that they were leaving me behind. I must have tortured that babysitter for several hours. I cried until I was exhausted. And later, when my parents finally pulled up our driveway, I stood at the screen door, peering out into the darkness of the night, and I kept saying softly to myself, you came back. You came back. For me, some of the most joyous words in the English language are, you came back. I wonder if, on that first Easter morning, Jesus' disciples would have agreed with me. Let's remember, no one really expected Easter. Those male and female disciples were not prepared for what they encountered in the cemetery that morning. They dared not dream of an empty tomb or resurrection. The Gospel tells us that they simply did not understand what rising from the dead might mean. They didn't really expect Easter. But, on the other hand, from the beginning of the beginning, God has made it very clear that he is in the business of life, not death. If you read the Old Testament and the New Testament with even a passing interest, you see that God is working to loosen death's grip on the whole human family. From the beginning, God acts to break the power of death. And just when it seems that human beings are convinced that God has abandoned them to the power of death and suffering, God comes back. God always comes back. And God comes back to give us life. For instance, when humanity's evil brought about the great flood and Noah and his family began to lose all hope for the future, God came back and life began again. When the people of Israel were trapped in slavery in Egypt, calling out to a silent heaven for help, and just when they thought that God wasn't listening, a man named Moses had his afternoon interrupted by a burning bush. God came back. Pharaoh let the people live in freedom. Later, in a little corner of the Roman Empire, God's people wondered if God had completely abandoned them, giving them up to the control of the Roman Empire. But God came back. A virgin heard an angel's message, and in an insignificant stable, she gave birth to a son. God came back. Throughout the life and ministry of Jesus, our Savior was trying to show us that God comes back, and God comes back to give us life, always. Every action of Jesus should prepare us for the empty tomb. Jesus starts to unravel death from the moment he begins his preaching. There was a man born blind, convinced by the religious leaders that God had abandoned him. But God comes back in the person of Jesus and gives him sight. The ten lepers were pushed to the edge of town. The man possessed by the demon, the little girl dying on her father's couch. In every case, God came back through Jesus to give them healing and life. In the person of Jesus, God came back to unravel death and restore life to the poor, to the powerless, the sick and the sinner and the hungry and the oppressed. He came back. When will we get it in our brains? 
God is in the resurrection business. God has been from the beginning. Once you see that, you have to ask yourself, how could the tomb be anything other than empty? God did with dead Jesus what God wants to do with us each day. Easter is not just history. Easter is the mystery that you and I are called to share. Like a panicked four-year-old child, there are days when I still tremble in the face of what looks like death's victory. There are days and seasons when I feel as though God has left for good, and I am left with no one but my grief to serve as my babysitter. The point is, whenever you and I feel beaten down by death, or sickness, or loss, or fear, or grief, Whenever we feel powerless or abandoned, God comes back. Back in the 1980s, for instance, friends of mine went to East Germany to participate in a university program there. They met with some of the leading intellectuals from all over Eastern Europe. They came back home, having been assured by those experts that the Berlin Wall would never come down, not in our lifetime. But two weeks later, two weeks later, God came back and the wall came tumbling down. My friend was once told, once you're a drunk, you'll always be a drunk. He felt like God had abandoned him to his addiction. But a co-worker handed him a note one day which said, I was a drunk too and found a way to be sober with God's help. Let me know when you're ready. And God came back, and my friend recovered. A friend's wife left him after 13 years of marriage. Her departure ripped his heart apart. He went to his church and screamed at God, and eventually he just stopped screaming at God because God appeared to be somewhere else. But now, a year later, He's beginning to find healing along the cracked edges of his heart. God came back. Who are you going to believe? The world tells you that death gets the last word, that life is full of meaningless suffering, and that there isn't much left for us in the end. But for those who pay attention, there is a different Easter message. It is shouting to us from an empty tomb, Jesus died, but he came back. He came back to give us life. He is risen. Alleluia. <laughs>